Grow Cookies is proudly sponsored by Board Bia and StopFoodWaste.ie. Welcome to Grow, Cook, Eat. Each week, we're growing one star vegetable and we'll show you how easy it is to get from pot to plate. No matter how much time, space or experience you have, it's amazing what you can grow with just a little effort. You learn all the tips and tricks to growing glorious greens in the garden. So what are we waiting for? Let's get growing. So Mick, today we're all about the peas. Aren't these absolutely fantastic? They really are. One of my all time favorite things to grow because you've just got, like from one tiny little pea, you get all of these amazing plants, every aspect of which is edible. Like you can eat the tips are kind of a very fancy, trendy ingredient in restaurants a lot of the time for garnishes and things. The flowers are edible in salads. You can eat the shoots when they're tiny. Eventually you get to this, which is a beautiful pod with Hopefully, some peas inside. Oh, Look my that. word. That is and a the, thing of the beauty. The thing about this is, right, because they're, they're very, very perishable, you will never see these fresh in a supermarket. Like, they're always frozen. And frozen peas are a good product, but you will never get to eat them like this, straight out of the plant oh, yeah, that or is straight out funny. of the pod. They're just delicious. Can I have one? Have one, yeah, absolutely. Oh, so good. Yeah, okay. really so, sweet. How did we get to this point? How easy peasy is it really? It was really easy. So check this out. So we are down at the raised bed. We're going to uh, give peas a chance. Oh. I know, here all day. And uh, get some peas in the ground. Yeah. Okay, what's the story? So really, really simple to do. Can be done in containers and pots and things like that, but I always find they work very well sown like this. Here as well, just to get them straight into the soil in, okay. a, ra in a raised bed or in the garden. So, so what we do is we make a trench about, about 15 centimeters wide. Uh, we know it's the right width apart because this is 15 centimeters. Okay. So you, um, one thing to, to think about here, right? So five, I show them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did very good up Thanks. to that point. Five <laughs> centimeters deep is what we're aiming for. So if you think about like when you level that back now, it's not going to be quite deep enough. So you okay. need to kind of go down about that deep into the soil to create, to create your trench, right? Okay. So a little bit deeper than you were going that time and kind of pull it, pull it this way across towards me. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. You happy with that? Yeah, well, <laughs> more to the point for you. Well, the perfection police. You know, I'm only twitching slightly, that's fine. <laughs> so we want to get it nice and nice and flat and level at the bottom. So this is a variety called uh, green shaft, which sounds a little rude, but it's not. So it's all good. So if we pour, pour these out, you can see these are basically dried, dried peas, the exact same as the ones you eat but these ones have been dried out and, and they're for, from last year's crop. Rather than sowing them sort of in one straight line across the way, traditionally with peas, you do them in a kind of a zigzag. What do you mean, show me? Um, so basically, like, like you're creating kind of, kind of an inverted sort of a V shape, you're getting okay. more than if you just sowed one line. And again, you don't need to be too mega accurate with the spacing with peas. They're sort of, they're, as I said, relatively forgiving. If you were growing these for pea shoots, which is a different way of doing it, you could have them much, much closer together. But for them, for these to turn into plants, which are going to be harvesting you know, about, actual pea pods, yeah, from, yeah, which are going to be about the, each plant's going to be you know three foot high, that kind of that kind of size. So they need a bit of space to grow properly. Yeah. So that makes sense. So I guess the more time you need to give something to grow, yeah. so that the larger that it gets that end point of harvesting, the more space it needs. Yeah. See, right. I do listen. Love your work. Thank you, dude. Right. What I would do is just kind of draw draw the soil back across like that. So push it in from one side, draw it in from the other. Okay. And you just want to, so you can nice. see, even though that trench looks like it's a little Ooh, bit deeper than five centimeters, when you draw the soil back in across it, it's it's going back to okay. its kind of original level. Give it a little kind of a, a level out push. and okay. tamp it down a little bit. Then the other thing really important. So what we have, have we these lovely things, oh, which nice. are literally just, uh, this is just ash. First of all, why ash? Um, Why not but, uh, some other random branch? <laughs> they just, they, they're nice the way they kind of grow in the way. Ash always has this kind of pattern of growing okay. where it sort of grows in and you create a nice little arc like that. If you, if you don't have any of these, you can buy pea support in, um, random yeah, in a garden centre or whatever you'll get. You can even use chicken wire, anything basically. P 
peas as they grow, they send out these amazing little tendrils to which grab onto things as they grow. So bamboo doesn't work great. It's a bit Too sort of sweet. smooth. Um, something rough like this is great. So basically our okay. trench is here. Yep. So what we'll do is create just a bit of a bit of a sort of a teepee almost over it, right? Going down the two sides yeah, of the trench. Yeah, exactly. They're going to come up in the middle of this and as they grow, they'll Go latch onto it. this. And the other the other benefit of this is pigeons love love peas when they're in the ground like that because it's a, that bit of protein for them and they'd be uh, trying to root them out or whatever. So this tends to keep them away as well. Okay. It's a little bit of a oh. little bit of a barrier. A little pest so we control. can do do another one of those. If you want to put them in, so just space them. You don't, we don't need to have them right beside each other. What if I don't have space like this for yeah. a raised bed? Well, they're, they're one of those beds that actually we've loads of options. Okay. Um, oh. And a very wet shirt. <laughs> um, so, so can be grown in containers quite happily, so we'll show you how to do that. Okay, next. deadly. Clearly not everybody has the space over there. And as you know, I am the champion of container growers everywhere. So what do we do in this small space to still get the lovely peas in a few months time? Yeah, so we were saying, you know, they are, they do lend themselves quite well to container growing, which is great. And the key to it is just lots of depth in the soil. So we've got, you know, a nice deep container. It's a good foot or more deep. And so it's got plenty of room to move and it's got plenty of room to take root in. Okay. And you get a good healthy crop. This is just a kind of standard tub that you can get anywhere. Yeah. Do I need to I know I need to do something around drainage. Yeah, don't absolutely. I? So if we if we just left this as is and poured a load of water into it to water it, then you're gonna end up with water sitting in the base of it. So you need to just put a couple of holes in the bottom for drainage. Okay. And a, a small layer of grit or stones would be great at the bottom as well to help okay. with that. Yeah? So am I, am I back to this trench business again with no, the five centimeters and... Um, <laughs> no, I don't think we need to actually. I think I think probably we wanna maximize the amount of, of peas we get in this. Yeah. So I'd be, I'd be inclined to not go with the trench option here and maybe just do do the, the zigzags. zigzags like that into it. More or less okay. the same approach. Um, and the other thing you can you can do, rather than kind of digging down into it, if you just put them on the surface of it and then push them oh, down with your yes. finger. Oh, yes, good it, idea. Just stick them down again, thinking about the five centimeters depth, probably about half your finger depth. Just stick them in there. And again, these are gonna need support. So the same idea as we had in the bed with the with the twigs or whatever oh, you need. Something like that, exactly. Flying the flag for containers. And that's growers. that's more or less ready to go on that one, yeah? And same thing, like same thing. in a, a little arch. Yeah, exactly. Over. Make a little teepee. Okay. Anything at all to keep it to keep it good. Okay, yeah. cool. It's sad to say, but in general we've just about lost our connection with food and how it's produced. But today I'm visiting Airfield Farm in Dublin where just like at Grow HQ, they're producing great food in an urban setting and educating people at the same time. Two things happening, it strikes me, right? You've got your, the food, uh, the food education side of it, which we'll talk about in a second, which is obviously hugely important, but, but at, at its core, this is also a working farm. Well, we're very specifically a working farm and our, and our purpose really is to produce food. Yeah. Um, and we don't shy away from that. That is yeah. what we're about. So uh, we interestingly have the full cycle of food here yeah. uh, on the farm as well, because we go right the way from the soil to the customer and yeah. to the food on the plate. For, for kids who are coming here, I mean, what do they think when they see all of this in action? Well, we find, and we have about 10,000 school kids that would come on our uh, children's uh, schools programs every year. And we would generally find that their technical knowledge about food is actually probably quite good. Okay. Where the disconnect is, is they don't actually understand the resources and the people and yeah, the time and, and the, the personalities effort. and the work that go into actually producing it. I think we kind of take our food for granted a little bit. Yeah. We walk into our supermarkets, our shops, there's an abundance of food on the shelves. Yeah. We don't actually think past the shelves. So really what Airfield is about is bringing them past the shelves and really to create a respect and empathy for food that they might necessarily have at the minute. So Grania, this is the, I suppose, your core teaching space for school tours and visits and so on and, and a working farmyard as well. That's right. This is where we, we bring the, the kids to um, talk to them about meat, food production, milk, and we also talk about eggs and, and, and the hens. 
These guys are just a week old, um, baby very chicks. young baby chicks, yeah. and they'll be ready to go to the abattoir uh, in about eight weeks. And so again, it's about like kids getting to see this stuff. Like this is the reality of eating chicken. Is that's is, right? Yeah. And getting to see the the animal at different stages. Do they as get well. a bit freaked out? By that, do you think, or are they kind of? Not really. Um, we find generally that the parents get a little bit more freaked out than the children. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which is interesting. They can come and sit and watch the cows being milked. Is that is that a daily thing? That's a daily thing. Um, okay. So it happens twice a day. So the Jersey herd will come in here. This uh, milking machine was kind of specifically designed for educational purposes. Yeah. So when we put the cluster on the cow. Uh, there's glass in the cluster, so anybody watching can see the actual milk coming from the cow okay. through the cluster, through the machine, into the tank, and into the large refrigerated tank before it's pasteurized. Education is core to everything we do in Airfield, yeah. so we stick to our glass food rules. So glass, G-L-A-S, glass is go with the seasons, L, local for produce, avoid food waste. We're aiming for a zero waste kitchen in the restaurant and S for sustainably produced food. Fantastic, and you've got a, a brilliant explainer here around the different veg that are in season during the summer. So it's again about acquainting them with seasonality and, and you know. And, and when food tastes its best. Yeah, and, and is its most nutritious as well. In GIY, we're all about this concept of food empathy and reconnecting people with their food in a really meaningful way. Um, and this visit to Airfield has just been incredible because it's all about that from everything they do here is about reconnecting people with food, getting kids to understand where their food comes from and that whole plot to plate and farm to plate experience from, from end to end. And the fact that that's in the shadow of the Lewis and Dundrum Town Centre and so on makes this just an incredibly impressive place. After just four weeks, our peas are flying and they haven't needed much attention at all. And let's not forget my container peas. They are rocking it. In no time, these guys are going to have shot up and before you know it, we'll be potting those peas. Grow Cookies is proudly sponsored by Stop Food Waste.ie and Board BF.